Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let me continue talking about um, trigonom uh, trigonometric aspects of geometry. So I'm going to, to solve some geometric problems using the trigonometry. Well, <clears throat> in, in this particular case, I, I'm not attempting to solve like any problem. However, um, it probably can be uh, categorized as a nice illustration of geometric uh, property using the trigonometry. Um, I will be talking about the uh, lengths of circumference of the circle and the area. And we know the formulas, right? So the circum circumference is 2 pi r, where r is the radius, and the area is pi r squared. Now, um, I would like to approach these particular formulas from trigonometric aspects which we know. And again, I'm not really pretending that I'm going to prove or, or, or solve something. It's more of an illustration. Now, in the previous, in one of the previous lectures, the one which uh, uh, was about trigonometric inequalities, um, I have derived this inequality between uh, sines and tangents and the arguments in radians. Now, this formula was actually based on certain geometric properties, and that's why it wouldn't be correct to derive geometric properties from the formula. However, as an illustration of this particular fact, um, which just proves that there is no like internal contradiction in, in, in the theory, I would like, based on this particular inequality as given, uh, I would like to derive these formulas for um, the circumference and, uh, and the area of a circle. Now, to do that, I have to basically define what is the circumference and what is the area. And now, these aspects were actually touched in the geometry um, uh, lectures of, of this particular course. So I do recommend you to review uh, lengths and area in the geometry uh, course, and uh, also we will need uh, some information from uh, the limits theory. And uh, these aspects um, I also presented uh, in, the, in the algebra course in one of the lectures. It's called basically sequences and, and limits. So please familiarize yourself with these particular um, topics before we go any further. And again, what I am trying to accomplish here is to derive these formulas using this particular trigonometric um, inequality. Now, um, all right, so let's start with, let's say, um, the circumference. Uh, by the way, this particular um, trigonometric inequality implies very simply the following. Um, now, for x equals to 0, obviously these are all equal, so I can say that x is greater than 0 and less than pi over 2. I mean, that was the condition of the original, but um, it's enough actually for us to to concentrate on these particular angles. Um, now, it's very easy to derive from here. Uh, if we divide by x, I will have sine of x over x less than 1 from this one, right? Now, if I divide this by x, I will have 1 less than, and instead of tangent, I will put sine of x over cosine of x and x, right? Or 1 over cosine of x and uh, sine x over uh, x, right? So, what do I have 
here, if I will multiply it by cosine both sides, I will have the cosine of x less than sine of x over x. And combined with this, I have this, right? Now, obviously, as x becomes smaller and smaller, this thing becomes closer and closer to cosine of 0, which is 1. Now, this is the 1 as a constant, so these two are narrowing and narrowing um, the interval where sine of x over x can actually be, uh, and it's narrowing to 1, which means that the limit of that thing is equal to 1 whenever x is going to 0, right? So let's just have this on a side, and I will put it here, that limit of sine of x over x is equal to 1 as x goes to 0. All right, so we'll keep it in mind. Now let's talk about circumference. Um, it's... Uh, there is no like direct definition of what is the circumference of, of a circle. It's more of a definition using the limit theory. So if you have a circle, and let's say you inscribe some polygon into this circle, and then you increase the number of sides of this polygon um, in such a way that the maximum side, like in this particular case, is diminishing all the time, down to zero. So if you have this process, and for instance, how we can accomplish this process? Well, you can always define a new polygon by dividing each side in two and replacing old polygon with new one, like this. This, was, this would cause every side to be smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, as this process continues infinitely, so the sides of the polygons are getting smaller and smaller down to zero, then we can say that the limit of this process is the circumference. Now, obviously, uh, you have to prove the existence of this limit and the uniqueness of this limit, regardless of how you um, arrange this process of inscribing polygons into a circle. So these are very um, uh, interesting aspects of, of the whole theory of the circumference or, or the length of any curve, basically. And uh, it's beyond the scope of this course. So I will just state that if this process is arranged in such a way that the length of the, uh, the biggest uh, segment is, is, is going down to zero, then there is a limit, it's a unique limit regardless of the process, and this limit is called the circumference. So I will use this particular definition of the circumference, um, and uh, here is what I'm going to do right now. So, Let's say I would like to know what's the limit of my circumference. So I would like to basically derive this formula using these trigonometric um, uh, inequalities. So let's say I have some kind of a polygon inscribed. In this case, it's a, it's a square. And um, now, in this particular case, the number of sides is, let's say, n. Now, on, the, on this particular drawing, n is equal to 4. Now, um, and let's consider this to be a regular polygon with n sides inscribed into a circle. Now, regular polygon is the one which, which has all the sides equal and all the angles are equal. So in this case, all the angles are 90 degrees, and all the sides are equal because it's a square. Now, um, what exactly is this particular
segment AC in this, in, in this case. Well, what is this angle? Now, if my entire angle is 2 pi, right, 2 pi radians, and again, why the entire angle is 2 pi radius, uh, two, 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 2 pi radians? Because uh, we have defined the region as an angle supported by um, the arc which has the length of R. So basically I'm implying that um, if, I, if, I, uh, uh, if I use the entire circle, which is 2 pi, it's obviously 2 pi. The, the, the circumference should be 2 pi radians because I have to divide the whole uh, circumference into this to get the number of radians to get the 2 pi, right? So I'm kind of trying to prove something which I already know, but again, I'm, I'm saying it's not really a proof, it's illustration. So let's just relate to this as an illustration that the theory doesn't have any internal contradictions. All right, so now the angle AOB, the angle AOB is one nth of the entire circle, right? Since this is my n sided uh, regular polygon, then this particular angle AO, AOB is 1 nth because it's supported by one side. Now, the angle AOC, therefore, is equal to half of this, right? Because these are two radiuses. This is um, the altitude of the triangle AOB. So it's pi over n. So this is pi over n. This is n. Now, OA is radius. So AC is equal to R times sine of pi over n. And therefore, AB, which is the side, is equal to 2R sine pi over n. And therefore, the perimeter of the entire n-sided polygon is equal to n times psi, which is 2 pi, uh, sorry, 2 r n sine pi over n. So that's my perimeter. So, what I was saying was that if I inscribe regular polygons one after another uh, with increasing number of sides, let's say I divide each side into, like from four sides from square, I go to eight sides, then to 16 sides, etc., that will reduce the length of each side. So, what's the limit of this? What's the limit of 2Rn? sine of pi over n as n goes to infinity. Well, we can say it's slightly different with 2r, that's the uh, multiplier uh, and limit doesn't really depend on it, then limit, then I will have sine of pi over n divided by pi over n. Now, as n equals to infinity. Now, I have this pi. It's an extra pi. So I have to multiply by pi to neutralize it, right? So sine of pi over n divided by pi over n and divide and multiply by pi. That would be exactly n sine of pi over n, right? n goes to numerator, and pi will be reduced, so that's exactly what it is. Now, this is exactly the same as limit of sine x divided by x as x go goes to 0, where x is pi over n, right? 
if n goes to infinity, pi over n goes to zero. So I can just say it this way, right? Which means that the entire thing has 2 pi r as a limit. Because this is 1. And that's what I actually wanted to derive, this same formula, which again, it's not like I, like I don't know it, I know from the definition, basically, of the, uh, of, of the radian and, uh, and some geometric properties. But still, it's interesting to, to illustrate the connection between trigonometry and, and geometry, which we already know. Now, the second part would be, uh, would be about um, the area. And it will be very, very similar, actually. So let's talk about area. Again, let's inscribe a square. Doesn't really matter what kind of. Okay. So again, the area of a circle would be a limit of the area of polygons inscribed into a circle, and the process would be exactly the same. That the um, number of sides goes to infinity and the length of each side of the polygon goes to zero. So um, let's just assume that we start with this particular thing and this is again n is equal to 4. It's four-sided polygon and we're talking about regular polygons because it doesn't really matter which polygons we are inscribing. There is a theory which shows that it uh, doesn't really matter what's the uh, kind of polygons you're inscribing as long as the lengths of the biggest side goes to zero. All right, now, so we have to approximate the area of this sector with area of this triangle, because as the number of sides increasing, the triangle AOB triangle AOB would be closer and closer to a sector AOB. And that's why the area of the rectangle. So what we have to uh, calculate right now is the area of this square um, and, and based on the n. And then, based, and, then goes to, and then n goes to infinity and we will see how it goes. Now, the same considerations. So this is our this is, as we already know, p over n. So AC is equal to R sine of pi over n, right? Now OC, which is an altitude, is R cosine pi over n. Okay? Now, so AC is half of the base. Now, OC is um, the altitude in this triangle, and uh, therefore the area is equal to the product of these two things, right? So the area is R square sine pi over n cosine pi over n. Or if you wish, it's one half R square sine 2 pi n over n, right? Remember, sine of double angle is 2 sine of single angle times cosine of single angle. So the angle is pi over n. So 2 pi over n, if I would take the sine, it would be 2 sine pi over n and, si and, and cosine pi over n. And I have one half, and that's why it goes this way. So the area of the entire polygon would be n times greater, right? So right now I have only one side. Now I have all n sides, so the area would be um, would be n times r square times one half times sine of two pi over n. And since I would like actually, instead of n going going to infinity, have some some kind of x going to zero where x probably should be 2 pi over n in this particular case, right? 
So um, this would be equal to one half r squared. Now sine two pi over n divided by two pi over n, and uh, I have to neutralize pi and two. So I have to multiply by two pi, right? Right. And now, what's the limit of that thing? Now, this is the variable which depends on this x, which goes to 0, which means the limit is 1. So I have 1 half r squared, 2 and pi. So the limit is pi r squared, which is the area of the circle. So again, my purpose was to illustrate that there are no contradiction between the geometry and, ge uh, and, and, and trigonometry, and obviously there should be none. Um, but I think it's a nice exercise of how to basically bridge these two things together. None of this is actually a proof of the circumference length or, or, or the area of a circle, but it's just an illustration or explanation, whatever you want to, to, to treat it, of, of, uh, of the validity of, of all these formulas, that they're all connected somewhere. And um, it, it's probably quite an interesting phenomenon. You, you learn something, and then you learn something else, and all of a sudden you see that somewhere there is a connection between these things. And the more you know, the more connections you will see. So this is just one of the connections which I wanted to illustrate. Okay, thanks very much, and uh, good luck.